Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com and in today's video we're going to be discussing Tracer watches. And tracer watches use tritium tubes uh, to light up the hands and the indices and this video is going to focus more on the lighting technology uh, than on the watches themselves though we will go through each watch briefly but what I really want to do is show you a comparison between uh, tritium and which is active lumination and something like super luminova or lumabrite which is uh, passive illumination so I've picked three tracers here uh, starting out on the left I have a, a P5900 type 3 uh, which is a 37 millimeter watch and then I have two P6600s, um, one with red lights and one with green lights. This guy's got green lights. Uh, they are around 45 millimeters in case diameter, around 54 millimeters tip to tip. I'll show you each one. We'll flip the lights out. We'll talk a little bit about the illumination and then we'll do a little bit of a comparison on the different types of illumination that watches come with. So the first watch, as I said, is the Tracer. P5900, which is also known as a Type 3 watch. It's a watch that is designed to meet the military specification for a, uh, a wristwatch. It's a 37 millimeter case from here to here. It's around 41 from, if you want to call it tip to tip, it's really not. It's a very blunt case, as you can see, not much of a lug. Uh, probably why it's very popular, because it's extremely comfortable. And it's around 10 millimeters thick. So you can see on the dial, you've got H3, which is uh, basically shorthand for the uh, radioactive isotope that's in it, and the little radioactive symbol right there. I can pull in really close, sorry about that. If you look on the hands, you'll see those green tubes sticking up. And then if you look around the dial, at the hour markers, you'll also see little dots. And that is the luminescence. We'll flip the watch around. Comes on a, uh, a one-piece nylon strap. Screwed case back. It's got matching brush hardware. The case itself is a uh, polyimid case, which is kind of like a plastic, but it, it's not cheap plastic. It's uh, impact resistant, very durable. It's a similar resin system that they use to make a wide variety of aerospace components. And this is not cheap plastic by any stretch of the imagination, but it is a one-piece molded uh, plastic case. And you can see this line right here. And it's like a parting line from the mold. So this watch uses, as I said, uh, tritium tubes to illuminate it. The tubes are made by a company called MB Microtech, a Swiss company. MB Microtech is the owner of Tracer watches. Uh, so they own, the, they make the tubes and they make the watches. Uh, many other brands, uh, very prestigious brands, use tubes from MB Microtech. But this is the only watch that MB Microtech actually manufactures. So I'm going to flip out the light and we'll watch the hands. You can see at the 12 o'clock position we have a registration dot, that orange dot, and then we see the rest of the green. So the you know like a standard watch usually you you light it up or you expose it to light and it charges this instead uses a radioactive isotope and as it degrades or breaks down it excites electrons electrons are released they get hit by a excuse me they impact a coating on the inside of these little tubes or the inside of the little glass dots and that energy is trans translated into light that you and I can see and they can play with the coating to emit different types, uh, excuse me, different colors of light. Green being the light, green and blue, but green being the light that will shine the longest, if you will, or that you get the most bang for the buck. Uh, it goes in order of the, the rainbow spectrum. Red is the weakest, and I'll get to that in a second. And it goes through the oranges, oranges and your yellows, greens, blues. Uh, same, same holds for diving down into water. You know, as you dive down deep, you know, beyond about 20 or 30 feet, red more or less disappears, then your oranges disappear. So in a dive watch, uh, it only makes sense to have, you know, green or blue luminescence. You'd never want a, a red loomed dive watch. That just wouldn't make any sense. So I'm going to pick up its brother. 
which is right here. This is a P6600, maybe it's its bigger brother. Got similar dial markings. Uh, this is a sterile dial. You know, watches that are usually issued to the military have no markings on them, no brandings. Uh, that's you know a throwback from yesteryear. I believe nowadays, though, it can have the the company's name on it, although don't quote me on it. So this has a day and date. It's a uh, Swiss quartz movement. Excuse me. And again, it's got the tritium on the hands and around the dial. You can see those rectangular slots. This is a 45 millimeter case. It's around 54 tip to tip. It's a big case. So there you can see the metallic case of the watch is now enclosed in this protective poly image shroud. So it's really well protected. H3 signing on the crown. Solid screw down case back. One piece nylon strap, matching brush hardware. We'll flip out the lights. And now as I was saying before, you know this is active illumination. You can, it doesn't make a difference how much light you expose it to. You could expose it to a spotlight for an hour, it doesn't matter. Expose it to a spotlight, throw it in a closet for 20 hours, come back a day or two later, it's going to have the same luminescence. Now some brands have gone ahead and combined passive and active in the same watch, which is actually an interesting concept. Uh, so in the beginning, the passive the passive illumination sticks out, and then as it dies down, the active takes over. And these are all just active, actively illuminated watches. The isotope that they use, they, they give it a 10-year warranty on the lights. I believe the actual half-life is around 20 years, so you should get more than 10 years out of it. And then I'm going to bring another P6600, which is a very similar watch. You know, slightly different, you know, slightly different bezel markings. This one has the Tracer, you know, Tracer name on it, but same case. You can see it's shrouded. It's 45 millimeter, 54 tip to tip. This is on a rubber strap. But now I'm going to flip the lights out, and we'll see what you know. We'll see what the camera can pick up. So now this watch is loomed in red. The watch on the right hand side. Now you can see my registration dot at 12 o'clock. That is blue, but everything else is red. Same amount of tritium, around uh, 25 millicuries but you'll see how it's much dimmer. And this is just because the, you know, the red wavelength of light carries less energy than the green or the blues would. So if you were to dive down beyond say 20 or 30 feet, this red would totally disappear and the watch would be you know, non-readable. Whereas the one on the left, you, know, you could still see. But you know, we'll come in and we'll zoom in on it. And you can see, see it's got the tritium tubes. The tubes look exactly the same as on this watch but they've been coated to glow red. The images that we show on the website are, are not exaggerated, but they are certainly taken under optimal conditions. So the lights look like they glow like flashlights, uh, but they really don't. I mean, they're, they're uh, dimmer than they appear. But the idea is, is that you put this watch down on your night dresser in the middle of the night, and if you wake up three hours later with what, we, with what I call adjusted eyes, meaning eyeballs that haven't seen light in a few hours, you will easily be able to see these markings on the watch. Even though as I go like this, you know, it kind of looks dim. As your eyes adjust to the dark, you know, obviously with the camera it's a little bit different, but as your eyes adjust to the dark, you'll be able to read the time quite easily. As opposed to a passive luminescence watch, like I'll show you in a second, you know, that starts out bright, but then it dies as time goes on. You know, that needs to be recharged continually. This never needs recharging. So what I'll do is I'll bring in the green one because I want to really try to compare apples to apples. And then I brought uh, a junked Stargate that I have. And it's been sitting here since I've been filming, uh, only you know a few minutes or so. And it has absorbed a lot of this fluorescent light that's above. And you'll look immediately and you'll say, wow, the Seiko, the Seiko wins hands down. And it does. But in a couple of hours, we'll come back and it will not be winning anymore. Uh, the tritium will take over and it will surpass the superluminova. What I'm going to try to do is set them up, put them side by side, uh, let the camera film, and we will see what happens over a certain period of time. And uh, as the dimness of the, of the Lumabrite comes down, uh, the tritium should take over. So I'm going to cut this and then we'll start the time lapse.
Okay, so we are back. And it's been a little bit over an hour. And now you can see that the Seiko on the left with the passive LumaBright technology has lost most of its loom. If your eyes were adjusted, you can still read the time. I mean, you can read the time on a Seiko you know, by the next morning as long as your eyes are adjusted. But clearly, the winner here, after only an hour, by a long shot, is the Tracer on the right with the tritium tube technology. It looks like it did exactly when we started. So it takes less than an hour for one to overtake the other. And that was actually quite surprising to me. I thought this would be a two or three hour experiment. Uh, this, I guess, was more of a shock. But what I will show you is, I'll just flip the lights on. Leave them on for a couple of seconds. And you'll see how fast, you know, the... Uh, the Lumabrite now on the Seiko on the left. The Lumabrite is now absorbing all this photo energy and it's taking in all the light and it's charging itself back up. It only takes, you know, it does not take long to reach a full charge. So maybe after like 10 or 15 seconds, I'm just going to turn it off and you can already see it's already back up to probably beating the Tracer. But in another couple of minutes, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, it will lose it. So. Those are the two different kinds of technologies that light watches, and you're passive and you're active. Passive meaning and you need to charge it, and the active meaning it is really self-powering. So this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you a couple of different illumination technologies that wristwatches use today. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to our channel if you have not done so already trying to publish new and interesting content, you know, maybe e even answering questions that that we get, you know, via email and over the phone often and try to, you know, answer your questions with a video because a picture is worth a thousand words. You know, put some comments down below if you have any questions or comments or concerns and we'll be sure to address them. Thank you very much.